welcome to another broadcast of Philosophic Perspectives with Arthur D. Schwartz on the Artist First Radio Network. All past broadcasts are archived. You can pick them up at artistfirst.com. Here he is, your host, Arthur D. Schwartz. Why, hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Well, you know, I've got it. This, today's show has to be about the election, the, the aftermath of the election. So, like a lot of people, um, that was not easy for me the last Tuesday night. Um, you know, what I have the, uh, the show tonight, um, I have entitled Trump's Election, Hoping for the Best, Planning for the Worst. And so that's really well, it, and it's more about planning for the worst. I mean, I do hope for the best. Uh, this, this guy Trump is just uh, its kind of an enigma. I mean, basically how he got elected. And, um, and the problem I have with him on a fundamental level is I, he, I, don't, I don't really think he has any core beliefs for the most part. Um, he's changed all of them um, in, in a very qu- uh, short period of time. And basically, it's the people he's surrounding him with that's going to shape um, his presidency. And, um, and that's not looking too good right now, actually, with the Breitbart and all of their, um, you know, extreme right-wing uh, positions. Uh, so, but I hope for the best. I mean, you know, I mean, I hope for the best. It's hard to tell. Uh, maybe the presidency, um, and it does in some cases inspire someone to go beyond and to change. And who, who knows? I mean, I will, I'm willing to give him a chance. But um, this is what I have to say about Donald Trump. I must say that I think he is already a failure. <laughs> I might be contradicting myself, but um, for the very simple reason of the way he ran his campaign, he's a demagogue. He seems to have taken training, and I'm not exaggerating, from Joseph Goebbels. Um, he's, read his, he's read his principles. Um, I've talked about it many times. Um, but um, he, he, uh, Donald Trump is a true demagogue. And so that corrupts the core of our intelligent public discourse. You know, part, I mean, I would say the, you know, um, the American way, the Constitution, democracy, and, and so forth. What's more important than I think than the actual policies are the methods. Um, it's the it's it's the process of democracy, the process of freedom. It's, it's like a, like a human being, like an individual person. You want to be free, even though you even though you might f up. At least you did the best you can. It's important to be free, so you have that ability to make a mistake. And so, in a, in a political context, when you undermine freedom, and demagoguery certainly does that. Demagoguery is designed to distract the voter or the the electorate from reasonable discourse, and rather focuses on fear, focuses on confusion focuses on misdirection uh, and racism and things like that. So it, it's really, in, in fear, of course, fear-mongering. It's, uh, a demagoguery is, um, as I've talked about in another show, it's the anti-philosophy. I mean, it's, philosophy is the pursuit of the truth. Um, demagoguery is the pursuit of power, and a lie is generally often better than the truth for the demagogue. I mean, the demagogue would use truth if it would be, uh, it, if it would serve his own purposes. In other words, truth for the demagogue is immaterial. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the um, acquisition of power and the maintenance of power. And so on that basis, on a very fundamental level, he's done to American democracy something that's um, really unforgivable. Uh, I, I really do feel that way. It, it, he, his his, his his debt presidency, no matter what he might do, and even the, even the good, he has now created an infamy because what he's done to the democratic process. And then, of course, um, his racism and divisiveness, it, it's all too common, it's all too transparent. And finally, um, and there's more than that, but I would I'm just have three points here, um, the subversion of the Constitution. 
And it really, I mean, the way he has, you know, he, he, he talked about how the elections are going to be rigged. Then he said, of course, unless I win. And so um, the thing about it is, you know, the election, there are parts of the election that there, there's, there's question, questionable um, things happening, uh, procedures, people being suppressed, being denied. I just had a conversation with somebody uh, talking about what happened in Wisconsin. And uh, sure, these are, legit, these are legitimate issues. Uh, but you see, that's an uh, uh, that's an issue that is just um, uh, objective. I mean, you look at that and you try to correct it. Uh, it Trump was clearly just doing what uh, he wanted to win, and so he says a pretty fair election. Uh, but um, if he lost, of course, I can just imagine what would be happening right now if he lost. Well, of course, he did lose, lose a popular vote by. Well, I guess it's well over a million now. I, I guess it's on the way towards two million. Amazing. Um, that's another subject that we'll, t- we'll address, too. I mean, I, I basically have been a, fa- a favor of the Electoral College, so I understand why. But I, I don't think it um, it was designed to create such a disparity between popular vote and the electoral vote. This is really quite amazing. She's um, Clinton is, is, I think, could possibly reach 2 million vote um, plurality over Trump. That's pretty amazing. So... Um, so, so subverting the Constitution by, by you know, talking, I think, like great election, by threatening to, uh, to, to, to persecute, not persecute, excuse me, that too, but prosecute uh, media members um, if he feels he doesn't, if Trump doesn't, President-elect Trump, a President Trump would not feel comfortable with what was said. He would actually uh, quiet the um, journalists. I mean, he actually threatened that. He's he he's just. I mean, he's such a little litigious son of a gun. I mean, he's. I mean, to, that's another thing we're going to get to is like these these lawsuits. My gosh, he has seventy. It's been reported that he has seventy five um, pending lawsuits, and the number of lawsuits that um, I, I made against him over the course of his career, I think, approaches two thousand. So, and this is this is going to be the next president of the United States. Um, so, uh, that's that's a big thing, you know. You know, just basically, and it's some things I unfortunately I'm not remembering, but he was doing things that would undermine the Constitution in terms of the election process, in terms of the press, in terms of. Uh, making statements uh, at one point where it, it, he would ignore um, certain, um, would ignore certain, I think, uh, edicts of the court. You know, I, I'm really I'm not remembering this, but I know he actually just threatened to ignore the laws. Uh, he, he is clearly, um, as he favors uh, autocracy, I mean, his favorite, you know, the people are, you know, Putin and, and the, what's the guy's name in, in Korea, you know, he's right out of um, a James Bond novel, like Goldfinger. Like he's little, this little midget. I mean, which, 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 epi- which, which James Bond? one am I thinking about? They all had these little, you know, uh, megalomaniac. Uh, usually they're midgets, and he, he, I mean, this guy in Korea it just looks the part. He's right out of a James Bond movie, and of course, it's not funny because he actually does have. Um, they are do they do have uh, you know nuclear weapons so it's a pretty crazy crazy world we have right now so um, so I do feel no matter what Trump does he has done something horrible he he he's poisoned our elect our electoral process and no who knows what's going to happen from now on I mean are others going to fall suit is this the way it is from now on that we have demagoguery we I mean, we have just all this lying and and uh, misdirecting and uh, cheating. I mean, he's a he's a dirt. I mean, he he's he's um, he plays dirty. Trump does. I mean, he just lies. I mean, the way. I mean, people talk about Clinton. Clinton. I mean, whatever you might think about it, her and lying about the emails and so forth, uh, it pales in comparison to this guy. Trump is just lies. I mean, like. Unbelievable! Not well over everything he says is just an absolute lie. I mean, it, it just it happened you no know, toward the end where you know when Comey, the, the FBI director, um, uh, you know, reopened the uh, emails, you know, with the 
the Wiener uh, email case and uh, computer. And um, and he, he, I just remember, everyone saw the speech, I'm sure. He starts going, this is very bad. The FBI director would not have opened it. This is, this is the worst crime since Watergate. This is the worst scandal. He's crooked Hillary, and this is, this proves it. And, of course, that was a lie. He, he act, Comey actually said, well, there's nothing. We don't, I don't know anything about it. It came to our attention on this particular computer owned by um, uh, Wiener. I forget his name. Jeffrey Wiener, whatever his name is. And uh, he, uh, he made it up. So, I, I mean, so I think he has already earned a place in infamy. Nonetheless, I hope for the best. Who knows? But I still think no matter how much good he does, he'll always be, mem- rem- be remembered by, as being uh, the demagogue Trump. He certainly made his mark. The demagogue Trump who became president. Now, here's the thing. So I guess you know, with, the, with the Electoral College... Um, with the Electoral College, um, you know, people are saying, well, maybe she saw the shot, she won the Electoral vote, and technically speaking, she can win. I mean, the elector, electors can change. Um, constitutionally, they can actually do that, not vote for who they're elected, but no one thinks that's going to happen. I mean, these are partisans. But um, I've learned that these, these are, they're not necessarily Trump supporters or Hillary supporters. They're, they're appointed by the party in the, the different states. And so it's possible that, you know, you have some that uh, wouldn't be really loyal to the particular candidate. But Trump's electoral margin is, you know, relatively substantial. So it's, that's not going to happen. But here's the thing um, that I think is extremely important. If you feel the way I do about Trump, that he's a demagogue, that he is not to be trusted, that he's a power monger, that he's a liar, that he doesn't care about the Constitution, He doesn't care about America, really. He only cares about himself. He only cares about Donald. That's that's the sad truth. But what? How do you? How do? What? What do we have to do? What do we do? Well, I'm not sure that um, Donald Trump um, is basically a fascist or a dictator. But the thing is, it seems like that's where he's heading right now, Uh, and so. I don't really know, and no one really knows what's happening. I mean, I trust that the people he's surrounding himself with is not um, is not very comfortable. I mean, it's not a very good feeling. And so, right now, there are demonstrations all across the country, um, large demonstra- demonstrations, and I think they're justified. I mean, I think it, he's an illegitimate president only for the only for the reasons I said, because he's a demagogue, he undermines the process. He's he subverted the the system, um, but I don't really mean he, he, he's not uh, legitimate in terms of um, constitutionally he was elected. You know he he was. I mean I, I've had no doubt about that. I think the Clinton campaign did mess up uh, in, in you know in the uh, Breast, Rust Belt states. I mean I think uh, Wisconsin um, and Michigan uh, and um, Wisconsin, Michigan, and uh, one not not he probably wouldn't have uh, she couldn't have won Ohio. Oh, Pennsylvania, yeah, uh, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan could have been won, and it could, and and so uh, if they campaign more, and I think Bill Clinton, that's that's what I understand he was advocating. Uh, also, you know, Comey's uh, influence and the uh, all the you know the. WikiLeaks thing was just nonstop. I mean, that definitely. I mean, she lost by such a, a, a thin margin in the, in the key states in Florida, in North Carolina, in Michigan, in Michigan, Wisconsin. Those were the swing states. And she lost by such a small margin that any of these things easily could have swung it. And so you got these WikiLeaks, which, which is almost anyone in the know, and all the professionals saying it comes from Russia. And so actually, I was just looking at um, online, exactly, on, on my uh, my Twitter account. Um, I posted this, but, um, and my Twitter account is just, it's Dr. D. Schwartz, yeah, it's twitter.com. Uh, but uh, what I posted is an article by the very, very well-known author, 
uh, Malcolm Gladwell. And he, his books were um, The Tipping Point, uh, is, I think his major one, and another one uh, also on this, flipping my mind uh, for, the, for the moment. But he's a very well, well very accomplished author, Canadian author. And uh, he, uh, he says that Trump will be in jail within a year because of all his lawsuits and legal problems. This is uh, Malcolm Gladwell. And so my thing is that these he Trump does need to be prosecuted. I don't go with the fact that uh, you know when he becomes president, so he should ignore. It, it's it's been established since actually Clinton's uh, problems, Bill Clinton's problems, um, when he was president during his impeachment, um, that it, the, the law is pretty clear now. And if you have a litigation outside your presidency. And um, and in not involved in in the, in the doings of in the, in the management of your presidency, uh, presidency. And um, did did I say pregnancy? I don't know. Pregnancy, presidency, presidency, whatever. I'm really tired today. Um, that 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 this that, that the, uh, the the president has is not protected. And so considering. Trump for who he is, for how much legal stuff that he's, you know, sl- slivered away. It's delay the, the the Trump University cases delay, 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 and now they want to delay again. I hope um, ju- uh, Judge uh, Curiel, the one that um, Trump called a. Uh, uh, unsuitable because he's Mexican. <laughs> um, he, uh, he, you know, he has to decide. He, he unfortunately did let, he, he was supposed to happen in the, in the summer, and then he pushed up until after the election. Now delay, now Trump uh, wants to uh, delay it some more. He wants to delay, 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 so he will use the presidency as his shield. He has no intention of, 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 of going to trial. He might settle. He has no intention because he knows he will be found guilty and probably guilty of fraud. And if he's found guilty and specifically guilty of fraud, he could be impeached. Now, he wouldn't be impeached because we've got a Republican uh, Senate and House. However, if the load becomes too heavy... Um, he will be impeached. After all, Nixon, Richard Nixon, um, was was impeached by uh, by a Republican Congress. So it could happen. Uh, on my Twitter account, I tweeted a few of these things here. I, I can mention, let me just read them. Trump wants to avoid court appearances and legal mess before electoral college meets. Don't let Donald J. Trump escape his alternate destiny. That's right. Now, that destiny I'm talking about, I would love that, that, tr- that the trial to conclude before the Electoral College meets. Then we might have something. That's not going to happen, however. Here's another one. When Trump, with his Republican majority Supreme Court in place, all his civil and criminal, uh, criminal court woes will be resolved a de facto dictatorship. So do you think I'm uh, exaggerating? Do you think I'm just uh, you know, going off on this? I don't know. I think if he has you know, you, all of these, these, these uh, cases that was, was done you know, long before you know, he was elected president, and, and it's already been decided, the courts have been decided that um, they are a president that's not protected, and if he can get away with it, isn't that, doesn't that sound like a dictatorship? I think so. It's a dictatorship because he's totally immune to prosecution. Uh, he is protected during Watergate, this, this emerge, uh, he is protected in terms of being uh, pers- uh, prosecuted on president, that's things that, that arise out of uh, his conducting the pre- uh, his duties as president. Even if he's wrong, he's protected. Uh, but we're not talking about this. We're talking about 
activities uh, that are totally separate from the presidency and were ha- and happened actually in this case you know, long before he even ran for office. Uh, Scott, I want to take a break now, and we'll come back shortly. In Ethical Empowerment, Virtue Beyond the Paradigms, Arthur D. Schwartz presents an ethical theory that is a framework for evaluating moral conundrums that go beyond legalistic rulemaking, dogmatism, and preconditioned thinking. The book is as much an ethical framework for unconventional ideas as it is for staying with convention. Ethical Empowerment is a manifesto of non-doctrinaire perspective. Ultimately, the hypnotic thinking of ideology and dogmatism can only be overcome by returning to the true source and essence of morality, which is nothing less than universal love. Discover how the philosophically liberating approach of the ethical empowerment can be applied to the range of ethical, social, and political controversy. Read about a plan to eliminate all political parties. Entertain the possibility of an overhaul of the patent system and its replacement with a system that rewards inventors while eliminating monopolistic control of patents and technological suppression. Many other transformative ideas are discussed in the book, including issues related to the monetary system, real estate, scientific paradigms, and a rational approach to conspiracy theory. While ethical empowerment will challenge your mind to consider new perspectives, the ethical challenge is always to keep the diversity, depth, and breadth of perspective within the boundaries of love. Ethical Empowerment is available at Amazon.com and most online booksellers in both print and ebook editions. This is Arthur D. Schwartz. You know, beliefs and disbeliefs can be very powerful. Much like philosophy, hypnotism is concerned with belief. Hypnotherapy, a practical application of hypnotism, may largely be described as the practice of removing false beliefs that form mental blocks to success, to happiness, and to well-being. In my hypnotherapy and philosophical counseling practice, I combine my work in philosophy with hypnotism in order to clear mental blockages that can occur on both conscious and subconscious levels. A mental block may be conscious or subconscious and can be expressed, for example, in the form of anxiety, low self-esteem or low motivation, bad habits, tobacco habits, weight gain, low performance, and much more. If you are interested in using hypnosis and the power of the mind to overcome mental blocks and barriers that have emerged in your life. Please feel free to give me a call at 617-964-4800 or visit www.integralhypnosis.com. That's I-N-T-E-G-R-A-L hypnosis.com. This is George Thorgood of the Destroyers, and you're listening to Artist First Radio. Thanks for joining us on Philosophic Perspectives on the Artist First Radio Network. Have a question or comment? Hit us up at DJ at ArtistFirst.com. Now back to your host, Arthur D. Schwartz. Welcome back. So, you know, I was just telling Scott, I just don't, I mean, I'm very tired, I must say. I had a long day, and I just don't feel, I mean, I try to usually, even when I get excited, I try to, I am an excitable kind of guy, uh, but I, I try to, um, you know, have some sense of humor, and it's, can, it's hard. Um, I guess I must confess that I'm like a lot of people that, you that you know, are, were truly... 
upset at the at the result of the election. So I'm certainly one of those. Um, and I said it's hard for me to joke about it. I guess one of those things. I, I must say I've said this before. I mean, I, I'll be totally blunt about it. There's uh, very very few people in the news that I've come that I've come across that who have created in within me this this the level of dislike that I have for Trump. And by the way, I'm aware of Trump for his of his existence, you know, for many years. I didn't watch his TV show, but I remember him as a tycoon in New York, and I I sort of had a semi favorable impression of him. But then again, with with not much knowledge, I didn't really I understand that he did offensive things throughout his career, and I I, I didn't know that. Um, but uh, when I what really God gets me was when I listened to him talk, and now, of course, he's toning down because he's elected, and so now he's trying to be much more normal. Um, but I'm talking about this election, which I think is very important. I mean, I think elections are important. It's the foundation of a democracy. If you corrupt the elections, you corrupt democracy. If you corrupt democracy, you corrupt, we, you tr- you corrupt the country as a whole, its political system, and the country as a whole. As also, I, t- I take it very seriously. I, and, and what I find so offensive is when I would listen to him and I just see he's just twisting the truth nonstop. People call uh, Hillary, you know, she didn't, it's been studied. I mean, she was, you know, not very truthful on the, on the email. And, um, but she d- did apologize. She made a mistake, something that uh, she said that he would never say. But this was very, um, by and large, when she talks, she actually is more, more truthful than the average politician. That's been, you know, these, um, these studies of these, um, you know, Pinocchio studies, you know, they, they kind of study these candidates and measure their, their, their truthfulness. And uh, d- d- some of you Hillary haters don't want to hear this, but uh, she is more truthful than the average politician. Sorry, it's the truth. Now, uh, she could have been more truthful about the email, and I think it was very foolish of her to get involved, to do what she did, to be perfectly honest about that. Uh, but her level of lying doesn't come anywhere near Trump's. And, and that's been studied. And, and, and you know, uh, you, Trump lovers out there, they don't want to believe that. Well, too bad, but it's the truth. And it, it's actually documentable. It's provable. You, go, you, can, you, you can just play these things and look at it, and it's very demonstrable. Um, it's really not much of uh, not much of a debate, um, but anyway. So I so I, I find it hard to kind of be to laugh about it. But then I got this phone call from somebody I haven't spoke to him in a, in a couple of years, and he was just laughing, laughing hysterically about Trump, because you can if you see you know about he is a kind cartoonish kind of character, and I'm hoping he really is a cartoon. But he was laughing about it and just making jokes, and he said he will be disappointed if he doesn't actually turn out to be a dictator, because he he feels um, that uh, I well, you know, this person's thinking processes are not something that I necessarily uh, follow. Uh, but because he he just feels he has to be a dictator now because um, of everything he said. Well. Anyway, I don't see, I just disagree. I mean, I don't think it's a laughing matter at all. Although I would say I do hope if uh, Trump does start going along these tangents, I hope that SNL, you know, Saturday Night Live would actually, you know, joke about it as well. Because if you make it into a farce, um, um, you, you, you tend to, uh, it, you, humor is a very powerful weapon. Um, unfortunately, it didn't get, Hillary Clinton elected. So, um, so let's. So, I would. I want to talk about some of this litigation that's going on. So, I, I talked about Trump University. There are three cases. The one coming up is the one in um, Arizona, I believe. Is it Arizona? I'm not sure. And there's one in New York, and I think the one in Florida. Um, the one in New York is basically a criminal case. It's about fraud. The other cases um, are civil cases. And um, I certainly hope that it is pursued. I really do. I'm afraid that, like I said, he'll get, he'll get a Republican majority on the Supreme Court. 
He will delay. He will take it. He will. He, he will um, appeal, and he'll go to the Supreme Court, and he's going to argue that the president shouldn't have to be bothered by this, and he'll get off completely. And I would call that a dictatorship. Here's another one I wrote: with R.E. R.E. Trump University, Donald D.J.T. Donald John Trump will probably keep delaying until a Republican Supreme Court will protect him. Then the dictatorship will be officially installed. I think that's a real danger. I really do. And I hope I'm wrong. Um, so there, there's so the Trump University litigation. Now there's the Trump Foundation. Again, uh, yeah, it's all the focus on the Clinton Foundation, but you know, with Clinton Foundation, there's a lot of good. The Trump Foundation doesn't do anything except make um, basically um, appears the only purpose is just to um, help Trump, um, you know, pay some bills and and collect political favors. Recently, there is a child rape case that goes back to the '90s. Yes, a child rape case. Go online; it's there. And suddenly, just a few days before the election. Suddenly, it was dropped, and supposedly because there was death threats to the litigant. Uh, isn't that kind of coincidental? I mean, doesn't you know? I, I know it doesn't prove anything, but gee, don't you want to look into it? I mean, she the, the litigant claims death a uh, death threat. Had to be an investigation to verify that? I mean, now, now you're getting into obviously really serious business talking about rape. Um, but it was in court. It, it was go- there was going to be a hearing on the, um, I think, 19th of December, I believe. Once again, it's very easy to find online. Just type in Trump child rape case and you'll get all the information you need. And that's the truth. Now we have um, this thing with this Russian connection, which is supposedly being investigated by the FBI. I mean, let's play. Okay. Trump does have something about the Russian and Slavic people, right? We got Ivana and and his daughter by her, Ivanka, of course. And we got... um, Melania, uh, and of course we got his, um, you know, personal, you know, best friends for life, best friends forever, Vladimir Putin. I mean, he's got something Russian, a Russian thing going on. Uh, and the thing about it is, there's a strong possibility that he has death. He has Russian creditors. Now, um, I often quote the Goebbels principle, accuse the other side of that which you are guilty of. Accuse the other side of that which you are guilty. He does it, you know, Trump has, during the campaign, did it over and over and over and over again. Now, when Trump said, some of you might recall, when he said, Hillary Clinton, if Hillary Clinton gets elected, the Oval Office will be up for sale. The Oval Office will be up for sale. Well, that was double speak, in my view, because what he really was saying is, is if I get elected president, the Oval Office will be up for sale. I mean, when he said that, I was, you know, I, I commented on it. I actually didn't see anywhere on Twitter or anywhere else somebody actually saying what I just said, because to me, it's awfully transparent, you know. It's basically, you know, he tends to project his own myth into what he says and projects it on others. 
um, there was a great article, and uh, I'm, for, I'm forgetting the author. And I won't. I, I'll just make the point that he projects his own guilt on others. That's how that works. And it, to me, it, when he said that, the idea that Hillary Clinton you know, would sell the um, the Oval Office, uh, I don't. Um, I don't remember any 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 uh, conflicts of interest there that, that that she was accused of in terms of selling the Oval Office. Uh, I mean that it, he made that up because it's very widely believed that Trump owes millions and millions of dollars to creditors, um, and of course that's probably why he hasn't uh, released his taxes. And, of course, he says he'll relax it when, quote-unquote, he has the audit. You know, I highly doubt that's an audit. Because you know what? I highly doubt he will ever release his taxes. He'll be saying that to the day he dies. He's not going to release his taxes. Because on those taxes are things that are very embarrassing. And probably it would reveal some of his indebtedness. Sure, and in taxes are right. You have to have your creditors on your taxes. And them, some of them might be foreign. And so I truly believe that Donald Trump, when he goes into, when he moves into the White House, that more likely than not, he has a severe conflict of interest. But of course, he doesn't release his taxes. We don't know about his foreign entanglements. But the thing is, when he said that about Clinton, about this, he's gonna, she's going to sell the Oval Office, to me it's just so obvious he's talking about himself. I just think that there's so much risk going on. That's why he may be impeached, um, and some people are predicting that. Well, I just told you he's going to be he, – oh, I told you about the very well-known author who's predicting he'll be out in a year. Um, and well, I'm just forgetting his name again, so I will find it for you. Malcolm Gladwell, the very well-known Canadian author. And the book I'm, I'm, that's on the tip of my tongue is uh, The Tipping Point. Um, but I won't, but he's, a, he's, he's written many other books as well, bestsellers, and, and, and highly and, uh, when, uh, 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 highly regarded and and awarded. And uh, so uh, he, he says he'll be in jail within a year, which means he, you know, basically will be impeached. It would result, if, he, if he was in jail, he would be, I mean, he ended up getting impeached. I think that's entirely possible because I do actually believe, and I don't have proof, I'm just, you know, like everybody else, just reading between the lines. If discovered, if that comes out, his presidency will crumble. Now we'll be left with Pence at that point. Okay, we'll take another break right here, Scott, and then we'll talk about Pence, and then we'll close it out. Are you a person who enjoys intellectual social interaction and finds digging deeper into the nature of things, from big issues to everyday life, an important part of the pleasure of life? Social Philosophizers is a Boston-area social club for those who desire intellectual socializing. It's a club for both singles and non-singles, and for anyone who finds intellectually mingling to be the best form of social mingling. The club offers a variety of interesting venues such as philosophical get-togethers in private venues, book discussions concerning literature and philosophy, topical discussions over brunch or dinner, guest speakers, theater, after-work mixers, even long philosophical ruminations along nature trails 
or city streets and more. If you live in the greater Boston area or occasionally spend time in the area, you can choose a cost-effective membership level that's right for you. Basic membership is free. Find the link on Arthur's Philosophical Perspectives show page at artistsverse.com or just search socialphilosophizers.com. We hope you'll join Social Philosophizers today. That's socialphilosophizers.com. You are listening to Philosophic Perspectives on the Artist First Radio Network. Back to your host, Arthur D. Schwartz. Welcome back. You know, I was just chatting with uh, Scott um, during the break. And, uh, yeah, he reminded me about Paul Manafort, you know, his, the, uh, his campaign manager uh, before Kelly. Um, and, um, of course, he left because of, uh, it came out that he had um, gotten into um, shenanigans in... Um, in, with Russian investors, I'm forgetting the case. I, you know, it made big news. That's why shortly thereafter he left. I mean, the Trump. I mean, it's just Russian connections are just swirling around uh, Donald Trump. I mean, it really is. And I, I, I'm not a soothsayer. I'm not. I'm not a fortune teller. You know, I don't. You know, I'm not. I don't claim to have uh, precognition. Um, I, I did hear I, on, on the radio one guy saying that whoever is in office will, will not finish his term. Um, I believe I heard that on Coast to Coast AM. I, heard, I forgot um, who the person was. I don't really believe in that stuff anyway. But the thing is, um, that could definitely... You know, they, that was said during the context of all the thing when, when they were you know, saying Hillary was you know, ill and all that. Which of course was now a lie. Which she was just had pneumonia. She, you can tell. I think toward the after that that she looked just fine. But I think um, that was talked in the context of her if she should get in. But um, now with Trump getting in, and with once again seventy five pending l- lawsuits for criminal um, uh, proceedings or. or or processes going on, uh, you know, legal issues. Seventy-five pending. He's already had about two thousand. This is a time bomb waiting to go off. Now, the thing about it is here with me. A lot of people would say, "Well, you know, give him a chance," you know. And I'm saying, I'm hoping for the best. I'll go that far. I, I really am. I mean, I am hoping for the best. But here's the thing. Because I am so fear so, so um, fearful of a uh, of, of of his corruption, of that he is a proto fascist, a proto Nazi, meaning uh, a fascist in in the making. Uh, that scares the living daylights out of me. And so I would rather have his campaign blow up, getting him impeached, end up in jail, whatever, ending his presidency prematurely, and have a, pres- have a President Pence, who I also uh, strongly, I don't, have, I don't I want to say dislike, I don't have anything against the guy uh, as a person, but yeah, I mean, politically, I can't stand him. Politically, he's, he's uh, extremely right-wing. Extremely, um, you know, tea part, you know, uh, tea party type. Uh, he he also uh, didn't pass the legislation that was prejudicial against um, gay, lesbian. I think when he as governor, and so. Um, but I think that uh, I'd rather have that because I don't. I think uh, Pence is just a conservative kind of a traditional conservative, maybe a little worse than that. Um, but I think I'd rather have him, someone like him, than Trump, because Trump is a whole different thing. He has the potential to be something that I don't think anybody wants. Then again, 
he has the potential maybe to not be that. Be that's just the thing. He's so easily influenced, and for all I know, he'll get rid rid of um, the Breitbart guy. What's his name? Uh, is it Cannon? You know, you know what his name is, Scott? What's the right guy? It's Darth uh, Bannon. Darth. <laughs> yeah, Bannon. Thank you. Yeah. Darth Bannon. <laughs> he doesn't shave, and well, anyway, I won't go into that. Uh, the, oh, I just lost the earphone. Okay, I'm back. Uh, they might, he might get rid of them and might, and might turn more moderate. It's possible with this guy. I mean, it is actually possible. I don't think Donald Trump is really, truly sold on any particular, even though he goes to white supremacist we, uh, websites or Twitter sites, Twitter sites and 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 uh, tweets and retweets the the right white supremacist stuff. He's done that. It's well known. Even though he he actually, I don't know if he really believes anything. So it's entirely possible that something will uh, happen and someone will get his ear and he'll fire, um, you know, Bannon, and uh, he'll uh, kind of become a moderate president too. I mean, I think that's actually possible. The thing is, I don't really know. That's what's really dangerous. That, and, of course, is he has no foreign policy experience at all. He doesn't have any, any government experience. It's just a complete unknown. I think in the case of Trump, he could actually he go either way. He can be extreme right wing, follow a proto-fascist, going, trying to lead the country, oh, disobeying the laws, trying to have, um, you know, uh, I mentioned, I think, in the last show, or one of the shows, um, that, um, uh, that, what's his name, Tony Schwartz, uh, same last name as mine, who co-authored, or who actually wrote the book, the, 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 um, the, the Art of the Deal, you know, but, it, you, know, you know, he was the ghostwriter. And, of course, uh, you know, it's, you know he, you know, he can't stand from him. He, he just, you know, he's, he, 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 he feels guilty. For be, he, he thinks he created Trump through that book. But um, I, I read somewhere online, you can, once again, you can, you can find it very easily, that he has predicted that Donald Trump will declare a state of emergency so as to have, I like, could call off the election next time around. Um, I do believe um, in the not too many years past, maybe you might know this, Scott, that they, a law was passed, I think probably post 9-11, that the president could call a state of emergency under extreme circumstances and um, delay um, the election. You know anything about that? No, not specifically, no, but it doesn't surprise me. You know, I, mean, I think it's on the books now that the president, I know it is, uh, every time there's a president and the opposing party is accusing, um, I know uh, the Democrats would accuse Bush, and now the Republicans are accusing Obama, that they knew he was going to call off the election. I think it's on the books, uh, you know, it's emergency powers. The thing is, a guy like Trump, I, you know, uh, uh, Tony Schwartz is predicting that he's going to do that. He's going to create a call. I mean, I read that online, and that he's going to he's going to fabricate a state of emergency and declare martial law. And you know, that's kind of like Hitlerian. I mean, you know, everyone knows Hitler got elected to office, and then he fabricated. His permanent, um, you know, fuhrership. He got elected, and then and that was the last election he ever had. Uh, and so, and that's the, that's the way the fascists get in. They get in through, um, usually illegally, you know, through an election, and then they subvert the constitution, they subvert the laws, and and they subsume that they, they 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 through fear, through threats, through assassination, uh, they take complete power. And that's what people are afraid of. Uh, but I'm saying that I'm just as well willing to admit that uh, he might go the other way, become a moderate. I mean, I think that's possible, too, because in past years, he was considered to be more moderate. He, was, he, he says he's pro-life. He wants to, he wants to nominate um, a, a justices of the Supreme Court who are pro-life, who, who want to overturn Roe v. Wade. But he's on record saying he's pro uh, pro-choice, a- and he, he he wants to support a Roe v. Wade. It wasn't too many years ago. It's online. Go find it yourself. 
he, he talks about immigration. The same, the um, recently, um, so one of the WikiLeaks came out that um, uh, Clinton said in one of her speeches to one of the big law, uh, Wall Street firms uh, that um, she uh, was for open borders. But here's the thing: that was that was 2013. That same year, that same year, and I might have a tweet about it somewhere. That um, it's reported that he wrote an op-ed piece. I think it was to um, to the New Republic. I'm not, but anyway, to a magazine, saying that he was in favor of open borders. That was in 2013. I'm not making this up, folks. This is the truth. So the thing is, he he's an empty suit. He, everything he says, he is he's, he's become because it's it is his advantage. Now he's become a conservative. Now that's the the um, ideology du jour. And so and so the thing is, now he's surrounding himself by the banners of the world, and f- unfortunately, he might stay that way. But I, but the thing is, I wouldn't put him past the change again. So I don't know. He might be end up being kind of moderate, but I do doubt it. I do doubt it. He's seventy years old. Seventy years old. I think he finally decided that he's a, he's a, he's an alt right guy, and 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 who knows what's going to happen. So I am all in favor of continuing the pressure to get him out of office legally. Um, through, you know, um, through legal and constitutional means. And I think there is a chance of that with these legal proceedings because he may not be able to control it. And if he is found guilty, if he's found guilty of fraud, if the Trump University litigants don't, um, you know, don't, um, um, what's it called, um, uh, what's it called when you when you could make an agreement uh, settle when, when they don't settle, uh, then um, he has a problem, and 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 that talk about not finishing his term would suddenly become very very possible. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, I'm sorry, you know. I wish I felt better about Donald Trump, but I don't. Uh, I think that his campaign was despicable. It did great damage to our country. Did great damage to to children watching. You know, so I'm, I'm thinking of the Hillary ad, but it's the truth. Kids watching this stuff and thinking that this is the way they conduct themselves. I'll never forget. I have to go on YouTube. I would um, actually ask everyone to go on YouTube and search for the first North Carolina Republican debate. That's when I first became aware of this. This is what what happened to Donald Trump. He was a raving lunatic. It was the, I think, the second Republican debate. It was in North Carolina, or or South Carolina, one of the Carolinas, one one of the Carolinas. And uh, I, I was like watching it with my mouth wide open. I couldn't believe it. I was tweeting with, uh, messaging with my sister at the time, watching this debate. I couldn't believe my eyes. You, you know, I, if you saw it, you'll know what I'm talking about. He was just puffing and puffing and calling liars, and his face was turning red, and he was pouting like, a, like an eight-year-old kid, and I'm looking at him and what the hell? And yet, he kept going up in the polls, so I don't get it. I don't get it. He got, getting elected, though, does not mean you're going to be a good president. I really hope, I really pray that things work out for the best. In the meantime, I am a commit, I'm committed to doing whatever I can as one individual person to see if, um, through legal means, his uh, presidency can be short-circuited, because I think the country would be better for it. And I think it is possible, honestly. I think it's highly unlikely it would happen before the electoral call. You know, I mean, if this all this stuff happened before the, elect- uh, the electors met, then they really could actually change. It actually would be possible, but unfortunately, it's the, the this is going to come to a head much too late. And um, so he'll get, he'll be he'll become president, um, 
And my concern then would be that, you know, with a Republican Supreme Court, if that, does, if that protects them or not, it may not. It may not be enough to protect them. And so it, it's not, the Electoral College is not going to vote uh, Clinton because, because, because there's um, uh, these, these, this litigation, is, it, 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 it's going to develop it's too, too soon. Wait, Arthur, uh, yeah. before you end, I, I just had a, a, a thought. Yeah. If, Thank you, Scott. Why doesn't Donald just pardon himself? Oh, yeah, that is, um, uh, that's also been discussed. Yeah, I actually, um, I, I tweeted about that as well. Yeah, yeah, he could, he, um, could pardon himself, of course, um, <laughs> if he, but I, I think there is, um, there is the impeachment factor. So in other words, if, it, if what he does is blatantly pardon himself against his convictions that he would have gotten, and and and, and um, judgments against him, you know, in civil court, it would be so outrageous that what you know that he could be impeached. I mean, once again, don't don't forget that um, Nixon, who of course Nixon um, wasn't actually impeached because he resigned first. He was going to be he was going to be impeached and removed from office. Of course, Clinton was impeached, but of course he didn't come anywhere near being removed from office. Clinton, uh, but Nixon would have been impeached and removed from office. Um, if this scenario would occur, if Trump uh, would um, uh, imp- uh, uh, acquit, him, what's it? What did you? What's it called? Um, pardon. Uh, pardon. Yeah, would pardon himself. Um, it's very possible that even the Republican Congress, the, the House and the Senate, you know, the House impeaches, the Senate tries. Um, that he may not. He may. You know, I, that's very possible. That he would. He, because I, I, because they would even even the Republican Party would do it because they did it with Nixon. Um, I mean, uh, it's a very partisan Congress, very partisan Republicans, but they have to get reelected. And so, if 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 the verdicts were so clear and so and so obvious and so uh, unacceptable, um, they would have to actually impeach him as well. I believe. Um, actually, I just want to um, before we leave, I just want to look at my. Uh, my Twitter account here because I'm going to see what I said about that. If I can find it, which I won't spend too long. I know this is really a really bad form to like look for a thing to do it all the time. And it's just because I'm sort of obsessive when I want to find something. I'm just talking here and, uh, and it's just like really bad form. And, um, I looks like I'm running out of time here, and so it looks like almost done here before I finally give up. But I guess I have to finally. I'm just doing this to prove to everybody that I am completely in. Thing. And um, but I did find it. It was near the top. So I tweeted this on November 13th. Trump will eventually try to pardon himself from prosecution regarding his myriad legal difficulties. He must not be allowed to get away with it. So there you go. That was just my way of saying, Scott. See, I already thought about. That thought that, you know? Uh, wasn't that great? I'm sorry, I was laughing so hard there. <laughs> <laughs> I had you to know, turn my mic I, On Saturday Night Live, um, you, know, uh, you know Kristen Wiig? Are you familiar with her? Uh, 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 not specifically, are you, no. Are you, are you, you watch that at SNL? Okay, occasionally. Well, she she's not on the show any longer. I mean, I think she's going to host this coming on Saturday. But, um, she has she has a, a character called um, P- Penelope. It's so funny. What Penelope is is a very awkward, awkward woman. And so what she does is make a parody on people, you know, who talk about something they did, you know, positive light. And then she has to up one up that person to say, "Oh, I did that too." You know, in other words, try not to ever be um, look. So all, always, you know, put herself in a in a position where um, she she is the equal or the better of whatever the person is who she's talking to. So 
So, and then again, said usually it ended by, you know, she's so embarrassing. Oh, yes, I did that, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually she becomes so embarrassed that she gradually melts like the Wicked Witch of the West and just disappears by trying to hide underneath the rug. And so what I'm trying to do, I sh I'm sure you're not following what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I felt a little bit like Penelope, wanting to just to prove to you, Scott, that I tweeted about the issue of him being able to, to um, pardon himself. The president, it does appear from what I read, you know, I did actually study when I was thinking the only blind, and actually... Um, the, re the, re the, the sentiment is that actually there's nothing in the Constitution to prevent the president from pardoning himself. The thing is, it probably would backfire because it would be so outrageous. I guess it would depend upon what it was, but you know, if it was severe enough, it would be just be, uh, it would be it wouldn't go over. I don't think. Anyway, so that actually finally, great, um, thankfully, ends this broadcast. And so I want to thank Scott, and uh, this does conclude tonight's broadcast. So for links to my book, Ethical Empowerment, My Philosophical Counseling and Hypnotherapy Practice, and the Social Philosophizers Club, please visit ArthurDSchwartz.com. And this is Arthur D. Schwartz reminding you to live well, think deeply, and go to my Twitter account, twitter.com slash Arthur D. Schwartz. And so till next time, good night, everybody. <laughs>